guys, I just got back from the garden center and I bought a bunch of bulbs. Like I was not planning on doing any more bulbs this year. You guys know we already made the big push outside and planted a ton of bulbs, but I got so excited. I've been excited all week <laughs> since we've got those in the ground, just knowing what's coming this next spring that when I went down to the garden center, I got to thinking like we have all of these big self-watering containers that we keep out along our fence line, but it's usually just for the summer months, summer and early fall. We don't plant them up till sometime in May. So I thought it would be really fun to just deck each one of the containers out with bulbs that will bloom in the spring. I can keep them here in the greenhouse or cold frame is what it is. It's not heated. Um, and then in the spring I can move them out and we can enjoy a glorious show out there. Plus there are a few other containers outside that have already been cleaned out and I just am going to pop some bulbs in those and we'll see what happens like the urns on the west side and a couple pots up by Versailles. So let me show you what I ended up with and I have kind of a random assortment, lots of different colors. Um, and different amounts of each one. So I don't know how exactly everything's gonna come together, but it'll be a fun experiment. So there's kind of a quick look backed up here. You can see that like if I organize to where like purples are separated, we've got like a purple and then a yellow and then a pink and then a white and then another purple, it's going to be beautiful. So we'll start off here. We've got Queen of Night Tulips, the single dark. They look a lot like the Cafe Noir. Uh, these bloom late spring, height 24 inches. We've got Triumph Tulips called Peace Flame. These are the ones that I planted at the church, actually. One of the ones, anyway. Red Devon Daffodils. These are a nice bright spot. And then I also have two packages, so 20 total, of these Triumph Tulips called Slawa? S-L-A-W-A? Is that a W? I don't know. Mount Hood Daffodils. I love these daffodils. They're so reliable here, and they're just really classic. Clouds of Cotton Tulips. Now these have proven themselves to not be very reliable in terms of being um, perennial here in our area. Like my parents planted a bunch of them, but I don't really mind that much. Like I'll pop out these bulbs at the end of the spring and we'll put them in the landscape. So they're not gonna just be one time use, um, but I don't know how these will come back. And there's, I actually have some other stuff in here. I think there's like five, four or five packages of these. So I'll have like between 48 and 60 tulip bulbs total. I also have some Double Beauty of Appledorn. I have some of these out in the landscape and they're awesome. These are going in the urns on the west side. We'll stay white, but we'll have some really pretty variegated foliage. Tulip called Artist. Isn't that unique? I love it. This one is called Dream Touch. So it's a definite double tulip, really fluffy. Down below, we've got more double beauties. I don't know how, let's, let's put them back in that box. Stay organized here. These are a daffodil called Taurus. Really interesting with that kind of frilly center, this frilly center petals. Tulip, double tulip called Wedding Gift. And then these are a small cup daffodil called Cinepel. Sinopel. Those just look very dainty to me. And then we've got uh, Darwin orange tulips. And yeah. Oh, 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 one more blend. Uh oh, whole thing's gonna come tumbling down. Hold on. I've got this blend. These actually come, uh, let's see, tulip, hyacinth, and crocus all in the same package. So I got, I think, three packages of these to put in one of the pots. Thought that would be really pretty. So all of these have different bloom times. Most of them um, span sometime like early to mid or mid to late. So I'm hoping that there's like one glorious moment in the middle of spring where all of them are in color. I think that would be so pretty. I also picked up some new gloves. These are my very favorite gloves ever. The Nitrile Touch. Um, I wear a size small and they're the best, best gloves ever. I couldn't find a single pair of gloves at our house. I don't know what happened to all of them. And of course, like I got some seeds for next year. I bought a pumpkin like this this year and I didn't know what variety it was. And this caught my eye when I was walking by the seed rack. So I picked that up as well as some Moulin Rouge sunflowers and some Missoula sunflowers. Those only grow three feet tall, aren't those pretty? And you can see that I've got most of the containers. I think I've got 11 of them in here that have been cleaned out and filled with fresh soil. The other three are back here. So here are the other three back behind the barn. The reason why they're back here is that these are the only three that had perennials. Look at this, wildberry hookah. Isn't that glorious? 
So I need to plant these out in the landscape or plant them up in containers before these will be ready for bulbs. So this is a fairly easy project, especially because this soil is nice and fluffy. I need to go get another couple bags in case I need to top them up a little bit. Um, so I can just line the bulbs out on top of the soil and then push them down to the depth they need to be. Um, I do need to go grab the bags of soil, like I just said, and then some bulb tone as well. Um, and I don't think I need anything else at the moment. Okay, I've got all of my stuff. I've got my fertilizer right here, which is my first step. I like to use a cup. See, I've got this cup full of fertilizer, and I just put a generous amount, like a sprinkle, generous sprinkle on the top of the soil in each one of these containers. Then I work it in with my hands. Honestly, I probably wouldn't even need to work it in because when I push the bulbs down, it'll push the fertilizer down. I think that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on the top then, um, and then arrange uh, bulbs in one of the containers, and then I'll stop and kind of show you slowly how I push them down in the soil and what that looks like. That'll do. Okay, so that actually looks perfect. I have a few bulbs left, so I'll be able to incorporate those in another container if I need to. Um, so it's a really good idea to consider, you know, what time they bloom and how tall they are. And then I could maybe mix them with something that grows either shorter or taller that blooms at the same time and it might be a really pretty blend. Um, so to plant these, you just take them and push them down in the soil like that. So much easier than when we have to plant them in the landscape. So I'm just gonna continue pushing these in and then I am going to top up the soil to where I have like an inch lip or so. So I'll make sure that they end up at about five to six inches deep in the container. That one is all done and I've got 10 more to plant up. It might even be easier just to fill your container to where you can set all the bulbs at their proper depth and then fill over the top of them. But pushing them down in the loose soil is pretty easy as well and I think that's why I was still so excited about planting bulbs. It's gotta be because I don't think I would get as excited about having to plant more out in the landscape and get the auger out and all the bending and all that stuff. This is so easy to do it in containers that it just makes it seem, I don't know, worth it. So I'll get all of these planted and then I'll give you a little tour of all the containers and what ended up going in each one of them. take a break just real quick I do have two containers left to plant but I got to this blend right here and I just wanted to show you how I planted them because the crocus are shortest and then we've got a mid height and then the tulips are the tallest so I had three bags that I emptied all into this pot so I could see what I had going and then I organized them in here so we've got our tulips in the center and then we've got hyacinths ringing the tulips and then all of our crocus around the outside. Now the um, hyacinths and the tulips need to be a little deeper than the crocus, so I'll only be pushing these down and then just topping these off with soil. And then I didn't explain, but for those of you who haven't um, planted many bulbs before, 
the tulip bulb you want to plant pointy end up this is kind of the bottom end where the roots come out same for hyacinths pointy end up that's where the, well you can see the roots right there look at all those and same for the crocus so these are a little bit more like they're rounded but you can see the buds coming up and you can see some little hairs right here and then you can see the round bottom end. That's where the roots will come out. All 11 of these are done and I realized kind of midway through that I wasn't gonna have enough soil on hand to finish the last three. So the three that are in back of the barn that have the perennials in them, I need to plant the perennials out and go get more soil, um, which that's okay. It gives me more time to get that uh, project done to get those perennials out. I will plant the uh, urns on the west side here in a minute and I do think I'm going to skip the Versailles pots as well because as I was planting like my mind was kind of churning and I kind of thought of a really pretty bulb arrangement I can do in that one but I need um, a couple of other different types of bulbs to finish it. But let me give you a tour of what ended up in these containers. So the first one we have Queen of Night tulips and I tried to do mostly monos, so the same bulb in each container if I had enough of those bulbs to complete it, because I think that that's what will make it the most striking, especially when they're all fairly close together. So we've got Queen of Night, and then I had a few Queen of Night left over, so I did a few of those kind of in the center because they're taller than these right here. I think that'll be a gorgeous blend. Then this one is full of these doubles, double yellow, We've got clouds of cotton in this one, artist tulip in this one. And then this tulip, I forgot I tucked it into another box. This is Pim Fortune. I don't know, it's a really pretty white one, love it. Then we've got the Darwin orange. We've got the red Devon daffodils. We've got the really pretty orange center there. Then we've got the blend. And this one, I went ahead and combined both of these doubles. So we have the wedding gift and the dream touch because I only had like, I don't know, 11 or 12 of these bulbs. Um, and I had a lot more of those. So uh, what I did is I just scattered the dream touch around in the container so it was fairly balanced and then filled in all the gaps with this one right here. And then we've got the Taurus daffodil in the last pot. I also need to water all of these in as well, but I wanna make some proper plant identification tags. I left like the little papers on top of all the pots so I would kinda of keep everything straight, but those won't last. So I need to make something that will. So I'll do that later. Um, let me show you the last three that I have left. So this is what's going on the west side. We'll take those here in a minute. I think I'm gonna do a blend and I'm not sure yet, honestly. It depends on how well these fill a container. So I'll start with these. If I need to fill some space, I'll use these. If not, I'll use these alone in a container with some hyacinths around the outside, which I don't have on hand at the moment. I'm gonna do some Star of Bethlehems in another container just all by themselves, something I've actually never grown before. And then these are for the Versailles pots along with a few other things I'm gonna grab later. Boy, I started out this project thinking I had all of my ducks in a row and all my supplies that I needed, but oh well, I'm getting the bulk of it done. And here's kind of the aftermath. So I've got one all planted. I was able to fit three of these packages in the urn. So 24 tulips total. And I don't think I said what variety these were earlier. They're Purissima Blonde and they're just gorgeous. They look like a hosta. Their leaves do. And then the really clear white blooms. Also, looks like one of my neighbors is getting a shed. They just pulled up. Three more to go. Yeah, that's a weed. Yak is right. Good boy.
planted it, I'm crouched down next to one because it's nice and shady down here so I don't have to squint at you. It's a beautiful day, like sunny, no wind. I don't have to wear a coat. It's like fall perfection out here today. And I really hope that the tulips work in these containers because as you can see, they will be exposed to whatever our winter brings. I can't really control what happens. I can't move these. I mean, they're staying put for sure, but I can't tell you how much I have enjoyed these urns over here. I mean, this last year we had a purple fountain grass, super bells white, diamond frost euphorbia, and dichondra silver falls in there. And it was beautiful. The dichondra in particular, it created a huge, like it spilled over the side and created a huge thick curtain um, around these containers and I, I put it in as more of like a delicate touch spiller. <laughs> I mean it looks delicate but there's nothing delicate about its performance. I mean it just got massive. But I've got some really fun ideas both for the urns and for this entire area next year. In fact I have a list of plants started, plants that I know I want to put in this area. So it should be a really fun spring. But I really just wanted to bring you along for today's project because there's just so much excitement for me. I hope there is for you too and so much to look forward to in spring. And um, I just got like this huge, I don't know, this huge amount of energy this week after we got all of our bulbs in the ground. And I just was like, I want to deck the whole, all the land out with all the bulbs. And my mom was just telling me how she ordered a little extra on the bulbs, like ordered too heavy on them. And I was like, well, I can help you out with that. <laughs> so it was really fun going down there and just picking out random stuff for containers, not really knowing if anything was going to fit. Um, but I think it all worked out. And like I said, I've got a few containers still to finish up and I've got to water everything in. But that is pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video today and we will see you in the next one. Bye.